Uh, Bertrand and uh, the lady here, so yeah. Lady here. Uh, hi, me, I'm Namita um, from Bangalore, India. Make sure you hold the microphone up to your mouth. Sorry. Um, okay, I think this is the third or the fourth year of the third year of the IDF, and I think I was there in the first year, and it's a bit, I mean, I don't necessarily see that there has been that much progress. In fact, this year seems a little duller than before, but maybe that that's mm, for other reasons. I'm sorry about <laughs> that. <laughs> so, I've done that. You try. <laughs> so, anyway, um, the one thing that I would like the IGF to look at would be that a lot of uh, conversations around access for all need to be also about protecting current ways in which people access the internet instead of necessarily replacing those and looking entirely at government-led ways in which access can happen, which is really important in the rural Indian context because only the government can go into the villages. But there are these ways in which there's uh, what we call the cyber cafe revolution in the cities of India, which is how ordinary people access the internet at 10 rupees an hour, which is remarkable. But that is slowly being wiped away and these are small businesses, which maybe is something that should also be looked at. How do we access the internet now? Can we protect those ways instead of necessarily always looking for government ways in which to replace it? Um, the second thing I would like to is, is about protecting children, which was again, comes up again and again, and about how children need to be protected from harmful content. And I would just like to remind that there is the Convention on the Rights of the Child which says that the, anything that has to be done for children has to be in the best interest of the child. So again, reiterating that children have a wide variety of experience and all those need to be taken into account. Um, the last thing is that we often talk about censorship across different jurisdictions, across different legislations. Uh, we need to nuance this. There are ways in which there is pre-censorship, which is continuous filtering the ISPs might do in terms of, say, uh, extreme violence or extreme pornography, war pornography, etc. Um, things like that, uh, which is continuous filtering. And there's also stuff that you put out there, like books are put out there, and then someone complains about it, and then it has to be withdrawn. So when we talk about filtering and censorship, one has to note that in developing countries, especially like in India, it has always been complaint-led. Someone complains about a website, it is then withdrawn. For a limited period of time, it then comes back. There are also other examples of continuous filtering, which the two need to be separated from each other, especially when one has to look at a healthy public discourse where unpopular speech is as important as popular speech.